Lead and empower her with Dr. Julie Ducharme, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet. Hear their stories and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. Lead and empower her with Dr. Julie Ducharme is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Dr. Julie Ducharme. Hi, welcome to She CEO Talks. I'm Dr. Julie Ducharme back for another episode where we get to explore and talk with women around the world in leadership positions in every industry you can imagine. Um, and the, every time I do this. It's so rewarding. And it's so interesting to get to learn about the industries and the women and what they're leading and how they bring in their expertise and their qualities as a woman. So before I get started, I want to make sure to say a big shout out to some of our sponsors for our June 17th event, Women Gone Wild, She Talks in Huntington Beach at the Huntington Club. Uh, we've had a lot of big sponsors, but I definitely want to thank the SAB for their sponsorship. They've been sponsoring us since they got to know us. So thank you so much for what you guys are doing. They're also a sponsor of this podcast as well. Also, I want to thank Joe DeSena, the creator of Spartan Races. He's donated 300 tickets to our event. And if you donate $100, you will get a Spartan Race ticket that you can use or even gift to a friend if maybe you're not a racer. But they have races from youth and beginner all the way up to elite. So if you want to say, if you want to support our event, which is supporting women veterans, you can definitely hop on our website. You see it up on the screen right now. The links will be also there. If you're driving or listening right now, you can go back to this post. Um, but we'd love for you to support us and be part of this. And once again, thank you to all of our sponsors. So today I'm really excited to have with me a well-known author, Diana Wentworth. She is the author of 11 best-selling and award-winning books and the co-author of two Chicken Soup for the Soul titles. Her film rights to the romantic memoir, Send Me Someone, were purchased by Lifetime Network. And she's also an international keynote speaker at women's meetings, writers, conferences, on cruise ships. She's a certified life coach, coach who specializes in reinvention. She loves to support clients in reinventing their lives and writing their books while writing her 12th book. Book, expect magic. And she has a long list of other accolades, but let's bring on in Diana to the conversation. Hi. <laughs> Diana, thanks so much for being on the show. Um, you just you do something that I love. I, I love to write and um, I love to read. And at an early age, I was told by someone that I, I wasn't um, you know, a good writer and so I kind of shied away from it. But later in life, I found it was a, lo a love of mine, um, almost therapeutic. So, and of course I've, I've read several of your books before and they, I think they're just fantastic. And especially obviously the chicken soup for the soul, love those. Um, so I'm excited to have on it and you're our first author like that we've had on the show. So I'm really excited <laughs> to talk about just like, how, so let's do a little bit of the backstory. How did you get into this world of writing? Well, it started out with cookbooks. I love to cook. I always love to cook. And uh, my first late husband, uh, Paul Von Wellenetz, and I had an amazing career in cooking and entertaining. We had um, cooking classes in our home first, but then we had a cooking school on Sunset Boulevard where Wolfgang Puck and all the L.A. chefs taught. Uh, we had our own show called The New Way Gourmet. We had six cookbooks, one of which won Cookbook of the Year. So that was a really fun time for us. But I only wrote recipes, you know, basically for a long time. And then quite magically, I happened to be hanging out with Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen as they were brainstorming the idea of creating Chicken Soup for the Soul. Mm -hmm. And what was amazing about it was because of the title, everybody thought it was a cookbook. Mm -hmm. So the publisher was very smart. He said, well, if people are going to the cookbook section, let's give them something. And they decided that I would write the chicken soup for the soul cookbook. Wow. And quite magically, I had just been wondering and, and playing around with writing stories that would be sort of like chicken soup stories, you know, mm -hmm. stories that make you laugh or cry. Mm -hmm. And I had compiled a bunch of these, not knowing that they were going to invite me to do this. And they only gave me three months to get it done. Oh, wow. Uh, but by far, that was my very best-selling book. It sold a million copies, and wow. they, gave, they gave me a third of the book. Uh, wow. So that was my most successful book ever, for sure. 
Yeah. I bet does sound so much fun. Now I'm like, okay, when are we having a cooking party, Diana? Cause like, this <laughs> sounds like you've got some amazing recipes and super fun. Oh, yeah, um, I love, it. I love uh, entertaining and hosting. Uh, we, we have something in common. I do as well. My mom did as well growing up. She loved to have people over. She loved to entertain. And then I eventually um, started my own events company. And before you knew it, I was doing events and entertaining lots of people. So I have a love for that. So now it's, it's set. We're just going to have to have a get together and, mm -hmm. and share all our recipes. Okay. So, well, that I, I love to hear about that story and how that happened and, and just how it naturally kind of organically happened. And then obviously you've exploded from there. Um, <laughs> Um, also, I wanted to ask you about your um, your film rights, the romantic memoir, Send Someone to Me. How did, how did you end up writing a film? Well, I didn't. Well, actually, I always thought of it as a film. Mm -hmm. um, I was madly in love with my first husband. We met very magically. Um, I was in Hong Kong and I decided that I needed to be standing in the lobby in a particular spot. I put on a beautiful dress. I went down. I was standing there, and he walked off the elevator, Paul Von Wannis. Mm -hmm. And he was handsome as a movie star and as, as soulful as a monk. <laughs> and we were engaged in three days. And so that's how, we, that's how that happened to come. Wow. And we, have, we had an amazing career. But at, just after our 25th anniversary, um, he was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Hmm. And we had already started the Inside Edge, which was this amazing networking hmm. uh, breakfast forum in, throughout Southern California. And um, just before he passed, he said, I don't want you to be alone. And I just kind of blurted. I said, send me someone. And he <laughs> said, I will. And so it took me 10 years to write this book because I wanted so much for it to be a film. And yeah. I had to learn, I had, I couldn't write, you know, just it couldn't be recipes, obviously. So yeah. I had to learn how to do like cliffhangers and transitions and, uh, you know, go back in time and back and forth and all of that. It took me a long time to write it, but luckily um, it got a lot of attention and it was picked up by Lifetime for a film, but they didn't make it in time. So I'm offering it again with my new book, Expect Magic, um, for republication and maybe a film this time. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, we, we need to talk. Oh, my gosh, Diane, there's so much we need to talk about after this. I'm just thinking about all these amazing people I want to connect you with. Oh, oh I, Well, you mentioned something I was going to ask you about, which was the Inside Edge um, mm -hmm. that you did. And, and a little bit about that. You mentioned it was in Southern California. And so I was just wanted to talk a little bit more about, you know, it, you said it was a bre bre breakfast forum in Southern California, and I read on your site here, it helped launch the careers of many of the most celebrated authors, speakers of our day. So I was just curious, what did that entail? It was, a moment came when we realized that we didn't have to prepare food to put people together. Hmm. And we had been invited to go into the Soviet Union at the height of the Cold War hmm. as uh, what they called citizen diplomats. And it was something that really brought um, conversation diplomatically that really opened up a fabulous new future for the Soviet Union at that time. This was in 1985. But on that trip, we were hanging out with all these Barbara Marks Hubbard and Dennis Weaver and Mike Farrell and the people, uh, Alan Cohen, the real Patch Adams, all these people were on this trip. Mm -hmm. And I realized, oh, my gosh, we don't have to fix food to gather people together. Mm -hmm. And so we came back and um, we just started this thing. This is before the Internet. You know, we had mm -hmm. to send out snail mail invitations mm -hmm. and uh, people showed up. Jack Canfield was there. He'd never written a book. Dr. Susan Jeffers never written a book. Mm -hmm. um, Louise Hay, um, all sorts of people. And. It was just, it was this dynamic place. We met at the Beverly Hills Hotel. And then we started chapters in Orange County in San Diego. But Paul and I would give these incredible parties where you had to show up as who you were going to be in five years. Oh, wow. It was really confronting, uh, but magic happened. And I remember Susan Jeffers had not written a book yet. And she showed up in a limousine with three mock books and said that she had just returned from her third New York Times bestseller tour. Wow. And she actually did it. She wrote a book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And she wrote two more books within those five years. And then 
just recently at our 35th anniversary, Jack Canfield said that he stole that idea and has used it for the closing of every training that he has done ever since. Wow. So it was a futuristic kind of a playful playground for people, you know? Yeah, I, I love that. That is so neat to think about that. And actually, uh, you know, what a great way. They always say that, obviously, if you think of a goal is one thing, but if you write it down a goal, you're more than likely to accomplish it. Well, if you show up as your future yes. self, I mean, how impactful is that? That That's how you're imagining yourself. I love it. I might have to steal that from you, too. That's Me just too. so fun. People I love, love it. that. You know, it's really scary. And mm -hmm. it, it gets you into the feeling of what it's really like to, you know, the vibration of, of that achievement. And it was fun because they had to stay in character all night and tell us how they'd achieved whatever it is they were claiming to have done. Oh, my gosh. I, I love that. And it's such forward thinking. I mean, mm -hmm. how to get people to do that. And I, I mean, I, it would be fun to do that with youth, you know, like yes, who, yes. who do you think you're going to be? in five years. I mean, how powerful would that be if we started doing that with our youth? Great um, in that? Great. I love that. Well, I also want to talk about, obviously, I have the book here. You've recently been working with Rhonda and <laughs> their book out. The uh, And and it's there's more than one. This, this one is our... Um, the first one out, Women Gone Wild, the feminine guide, the feminine guide to fearless living with 24 I, authors, the uh -huh. forward done by by you and right. New York Times bestseller. Um, tell us a little bit about this book because you're obviously going to be at our event June 17th. Um, and so I'd love to hear about this. It's really wonderful because um, I teach writing classes anyway. And mm -hmm. I was teaching a writing class that brought out a whole lot of exuberance. And I thought, you know, women have had a lid on them all their lives, you know, and they're not supposed to be too exuberant or too out there. Mm -hmm. So I had gone to my, uh, to, uh, what did go daddy. And mm -hmm. I bought a domain called women writing wild. And mm -hmm. a couple of days later, this is the magic that happens in my yeah. life on a daily basis. I got a call to write the foreword for the women gone wild. The first, the first book, mm -hmm. And it, they were, Rhonda was really seeing it as the chicken soup for the soul for women's empowerment. Mm -hmm. And that's what brought me in. Mm -hmm. And then for the wealth edition, which is uh, going to be launched on Saturday, mm -hmm. um, I did a chapter. And mm -hmm. then for the next edition, the intuition edition, I've again done the forward. So I've pretty mm -hmm. much been very fortunate um, that I got to be part of this book from the beginning. Yeah. And you know, it. Um, we've had so many conversations, Rhonda and I, she's actually been here since Friday. So we've been mm -hmm. having a lot of fun talking about it. And, and she talks, as you know, is a women, a platform for women to tell their stories. Um, and I love this connect, coming together because obviously not all women are comfortable on stage. And so the opportunity to tell your story through the written word, I think is so powerful. And, you know, I know you probably know this just like I do, but women are, are very often don't know their worth or their potential or how their life story could be impactful, um, like your chicken soup for the soul stories. And so I, I agree with you that I think this is a great way to open the door for women to be able to tell their story in, in a safe environment where maybe they're not comfortable on stage yet, but maybe they will. Mm -hmm. and I love this because it's such a great pairing of like talking and, and speaking and writing and bringing that together um, to bring this out. And, you know, it's excited. There's, I think each year Rhonda is bringing out another book of these, um, mm -hmm. if I believe. And for those of you who don't know, the wild actually sounds for wealth, intuition, uh, leadership and diversity. And mm -hmm. so at our event, we'll have women speaking in each one of those categories, which is really awesome as well. Uh, I think we're going to be having, you're an intuition, right, Diana? And I am. I get to start that. I'm so excited about it. Yeah. And then we have, we're going to have Sharon Lecter in wealth. Um, I believe we have Dr. Kameen in leadership. And then we have Dr. Jen Walter and Dr. Justine Siegel in diversity. Um, mm -hmm. And then of course, a long list of other women Women. But it will be so fun to bring together. I was thinking to myself today, you know what? When's the last time we had this many amazing women in one room at mm -hmm. one time, being okay. able to share mm -hmm. just a few moments of, of their their truth and their light? Well, I want to ask for you, ask you as well. We I'm sure we have many budding writers out there, many women who are interested in like, how do I get into writing? Mm -hmm. Are there some tips that you can give to some of the women out there thinking like, what what do I do? 
Well, quite often in my writing classes, I'll have uh, women get up and go around their home and pick up three very meaningful objects mm -hmm. and then just write a little essay about the history of that, you know, because that's a way of getting into a story. This Somebody, if they inherit this object, they may never find out what it even meant to you. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important to memorialize them anyway mm -hmm. and just put yourself back into the time when this be developed meaning in your life and tell us the story mm -hmm. uh, and you can begin to collect those. And then sometimes I, I give all sorts of writing tips and I got to work. Fortunately, Rhonda had me work with the women who uh, were became co-authors mm -hmm. and uh, give some writing classes and work one-on-one -on -one with them for them to figure out exactly what was the most uh, so a message from their essence instead of their ego. You know, why had they gone in the direction they'd gone? And I think those are the stories that are going to be the most meaningful in the books for sure. Yeah, I love that. That What a great way to start that is just writing about something that's meaningful to you. Mm -hmm. I, I remember I took this creative writing class in college and actually it wasn't a college class. It was like a class being put on by the church that was on site. Um, but I so desperately wanted to be a writer that I, I took the course and it was me. And I mean, I think I was the only like 19 year old in there and everyone else was like 30 plus. And, and I, but I got a chance to kind of start to learn about creative writing, um, which wasn't really something I was taught in college. It was English, you know, learn how to write your memos and so forth. And so what a great way to think about how people can do that. Now, what about some barriers? Did you hit any barriers along the way that maybe you can share for some of our women who may be thinking about going in it or, or going through it right now? I hit, just like everybody else, I hit lots of barriers where things just suddenly fell apart and I've always, I've had so much magic in my life, so many people showing up um, that I've begun to trust that I can, I can ask. You know, scientists are proving now something that I've always known, that we can have a much more dynamic relationship with all that is, mm. uh, with the infinite. Uh, they talk about the quantum field. Uh, as being all that is in the new web telescope that even shows the birth of stars. But I've always trusted my own relationship um, with the divine. Mm. So I create what I call quantum questions. And these questions contain the feeling of the answer you want. So when I first wake up in the morning, um, I smile because that gives a uh, directions to your body to release the, the feel-good hormones. You know, most of us wake up in terror. You know, what do, what do we have to do today? You know, uh, so I smile, and then I then I I have fun making up a, a question that triggers all sorts of good feelings. Mm -hmm. So it might be something like, "Where's the most joy to be found today?" Mm -hmm. Or, "How can I most effectively light up this world?" You know, and there's something about that that gives me those feelings. And then I, 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 I listen really well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I use um, Newcom, which is an app. It's, for, it's a brain science. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of live in a reverie of expecting solutions. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing what comes through because all sorts of things come through. I can even dictate like 2,500 words onto my phone while I'm listening hmm. to something that is taking me into the different alpha states and the theta and all of that. Hmm. So even at 82, ladies, uh, hmm. it's important to keep those brain cells working and keep your curiosity and mm -hmm. wonder very alive. Because I think, I think expecting magic is, you know, it's, I, hmm. it, this expectation is a frequency. Yeah. And I, that it magnetizes to mm. us what we're dreaming of. Mm. Yeah, such great, important advice. Uh, I agree with you. I, I think when I start my mornings off like you with a with a positive note, and and mindset really affects it. You know, we always talk about that. If you, even if you're unhappy, if you smile long enough, you'll eventually just start naturally doing it. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just reading something the other day that talked about gratitude. 
and starting off your morning, just being thankful. And, mm-hmm. and as you start finding all the things that you're thankful for, you suddenly start going, well, holy cow, I'm pretty blessed. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of starting your morning off with, oh, I need this and this isn't happening. And, you know, and so I've been really focusing on that, starting my morning with just saying, thank you. Thank you for yeah. this and this that's, and this and this. I think that's you know. the best entry. I think you're right on about that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I think it sets your tone. And, and, you know, I always try and be a positive person, right? Mm-hmm. Because if we live in the negative, we will always live in the negative. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had some good advice one time. Someone said to me, you know, why are you so stressed out before this has even happened? You're already defeating yourself. You know, mm-hmm. you're stressing about things that aren't happening, that aren't present. You're stressing about things that might happen. Mm-hmm. And that was some great advice about looking to the future and thinking, okay, you know what? I can't, foresee the future, but I also can't stress about something that may never happen, you know? Um, so I love hearing that. And you know, it's really interesting. You're the third person that I've interviewed that's talked about the quantum field. Um, Mm -hmm. Larry Farwell has a book out about, um, creating miracles. Mm -hmm. And then I just talked with Barbie Layton the other day and all, all those two and you as well, all talked about the quantum. Um, and I think that's really interesting and, and it's really tying in, uh, Dr. Larry Farber's book about creating miracles through science was mm-hmm. so intriguing to me, yeah. um, about how there's a science to it. So I'm really starting to see all this connection coming through with, you know, all of you and, and, and your mm-hmm. successes and how you look at things. So I love that. Oh. Well, as we're coming towards the end of the podcast, I want to make sure that we highlight all the wonderful things that are going on. We've mentioned that you're going to be at our event June 17th, mm-hmm. um, in Huntington Beach at the Huntington Club. So if you guys still haven't got your tickets, there's still room for tickets. Um, and that's going to be a really great event. And we are going to be benefiting women veterans, which is a, we're really excited about. Um, then we also have, you talked about your circles. Let's talk about the circles. Can you explain that? Yes. Um, there is a website that's wisdom-circles.com. And you can access it through my website, which is dianawentworth.com. Uh, and oh, good, look at that graphic. And <laughs> so we work with women all over the world on Zoom, and we have different length programs. And it, we love to really create deep sisterhood mm-hmm. around the subject of what can we do for an encore? What, what's going to express what our life has been all about that, that mm-hmm. we will leave for? For future. And it's so exciting to watch the breakthroughs that these women have. And I just love it. So you're welcome to sign up for like a a 15 minute interview or find out if we're right for you. But it's, it's a real passion that we have there. Yeah, I, I love that you're building a sisterhood. You know, that's something that we're trying to do too. Um, I always look at my past and the, the lack of sisterhood I had and the lack of mentorship. And so I just think that's so important um, as we are going through our life, you know, especially as women in particular, I notice women really need that sisterhood. So for those of you guys listening, I hope you check it out. I'm going to be checking it out. I didn't know you were doing that. Um, and then of course we have your upcoming book. It's not out yet, but expect magic. Mm-hmm. Can we have just a teaser about what it might be? Well, you actually pretty much did because all of this conversation that I believe can get very real, uh, that's what expecting magic is. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I realized that I could expect magic in a very odd way, actually, because I was at UCLA and I went to Europe with my with with my mother. Just before I left, I was with my sorority sisters, and they said, um, I, "I said, can you turn the music down?" And they said, oh, "Well, Diana doesn't like Elvis Presley." And I said, "Actually, I do, and I'm going to date him someday." And I had no idea where this was coming from. Yeah. But I got to Paris, mother and I were staying in a hotel with our tour, and a kid comes running up to me and says, Diana, Elvis is in the dining room. <laughs> I was scared to ask him for his autograph. And long story short, I mean, this is in, in, my, in the Chicken Soup book and in the Send Me Someone book, but he invited me to go with him that night to the Lido nightclub, and we ended up being friends for two years. But, I mean, how did I even know? How could I even, what? you know, where would I even find him? Because he was in the Army at that time in Germany. Oh, you my know? gosh. So, so that kind of gave me a clue that there was a lot of magic going on that I didn't yet know about at that time. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. Well, we're excited for that. So you guys need to keep an eye on Diana's website uh, mm -hmm. for when that does come out. It sounds like it's just going to be a phenomenal book. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for being on our show. I'm so excited to meet you in person and, and mm -hmm. learning even more about you. I mean, we're, we're going to be having cooking parties and get together. It's just too I much. I just, I'm there. We're gonna, we got to do it. It's going to be so much fun. So as I always say, live, love, laugh, and always be your authentic self. Thanks for listening to Lead and Empower Her with your host, Dr. Julie Ducharme. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates, and we'll see you on the next episode.